Hello Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That, Thai Thursday. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about one of the main exports from the US to Thailand. The term fake news has entered the lexicon of Association of Southeast Asian Nations. In an official statement that was released after an ASEAN November summit, the Southeast Asian leaders said that they were countering the spread of fake news. which might be good, except that some of their methods are a little bit more hands-on than simply pointing at the closest CNN anchor and calling them fake news until they remember their next talking point. This story first caught my attention when it was reported that Thai police issued a summons for this man, a Thai anti-junta academic, for spreading fake news about the wife of the junta leader's purse. Really? Are you sure it's fake news? This guy looks like he knows about as much about purses as my grandfather knows about Bitcoin. He looks like the kind of guy who would go shopping for purses at the 7-Eleven. Anyways, what was the extent of his fake news? Did he make like American news sites and claim that about a month ago American Delta forces stormed an Obama compound in Thailand? Of which literally not one word of that is true? Nope. He misidentified Nurafan Chanocha's purse as a 2 million bot purse when in actuality it was a 10,000 bot purse. Oh man, I think someone hit a wrong number when they were trying to call the fashion police. He is being brought up on the Computer Crimes Act, which says, correctly, that he dispensed forged computer data. He is currently facing some combination of a 100,000 bot fine and 5 years in jail. According to the Japan Times, Thailand has strict laws that protect the royal family from insult and has cybersecurity laws that have up to 7 year prison sentences for the spread of false information. So I'm going to make sure I triple check everything I say. Now this is probably breaking news to Thai people in the same way that it's breaking news that the sun came up in the morning or that Trump tweeted something offensive. Now don't get me wrong. None of this is illegal under Thai law, so let's take a second to look under the hood and see what the mechanics of arresting someone for fake news is. According to Human Rights Watch, a publisher that definitely has a bit of an agenda, since the May 2014 coup, the National Council for Peace and Order has been using the Computer Crimes Act. If you remember from my episode on the upcoming Thai elections, which were again delayed on January 24th after Thai junta leaders revealed that if you let people vote on things, they might change, the National Council for Peace and Order would be the group that would be replaced by the House of Representatives come eventual election. So what is this 2007 Computer Crimes Act that is keeping Thai news so accountable? The main point of contention is Article 14 Part 1 and 2. Article 14 Part 1 assigns 5 year imprisonment and a 100,000 bot fine for people who publish forged or false content likely to damage a third party of the public. Wow, getting 5 years of prison for lying or insulting people on the internet? Hey Tai Junta, wanna read through my YouTube comments? I could have your prisons filled before you could even finish saying fake news. Now, the point of contention is that if you haven't insulted someone on the internet, you either don't have the internet or you're the pope. Okay, let's just stick with you don't have the internet. This law allows the government potentially to throw the book at any government critic who even got a junta leader's wife's purse brand incorrect. Article 14 section 2 of the Computer Crimes Act is a little more complicated because as Law Plus reported, it was recently changed in a sweeping amendment in 2017 which allowed the government to charge someone for up to 5 years in prison for importing into a computer system false information which may compromise the maintenance of national security, public security, economic stability, public services, or cause panic in the public. Which is some worried because of the vagueness of that language. But don't worry, they clarified that this was means to refer to an attack against the computer system of public infrastructure. Which led critics to ask, well why didn't you just say that rather than writing about panic in the public and economic stability? One last contentious point is that these amendments brought with them the ability to remove content deemed immoral. Now this isn't exactly a new thing, I mean China does it. 
although it does lead to some weird convictions. A Hillcrest couple arrested for posting pictures of them dropping their pants at a Buddhist temple in Thailand could now face years behind bars. As the outcry in Thailand grew louder, the Bangkok Post reporting police preparing two more charges, a computer crime for pornography. Oddly enough, one of the major crimes they were charged with was under the Computer-Related Crimes Act. Unsurprisingly, because they're American citizens, they were not held for that 12 years, but rather 8 days. Man, Americans and other legal systems are like celebrities in our legal system. Now, I'm going to end this episode on a less controversial note, because there are some amazing actions being taken in the fight against fake news in Thailand. First, according to The Drum, Thailand's Ministry of Public Health has released a new smartphone app that allows people to report fake or misleading news. This app, currently on the Google Play Store, allows Thai people to report incorrect facts on the internet, in the social media equivalent to counting the grains of sand on a beach. This is a less invasive strategy for targeting fake news to be removed from the internet. Now, they also have a Facebook page that I might report myself to because I could really use the additional views from a government agency just sweeping over all of my work. Lastly, we see a Thai reporter who took a stand to battle the hordes of fake news circulating the media. According to Japan's public broadcasting channel NHK World, Pirapong Anatara Swat is starting a new show in which viewers can report suspicious data and he will verify it on the show. Just think of it like Mythbusters, except instead of learning about whether a ton of dynamite can clear cement out of a mixer, turns out it just blows everything up. Glad we cracked that case for the next time I have a cement truck and a ton of dynamite. It answers less explosive and more practical questions, like when he investigated a pork factory facing some accusations online and asked, is cotton used instead of pork? To which the owner replied, there's no such chance, not even 1%. Unless of course you're vegetarian, then you can enjoy this nice pillowy cut of pork loin. This show has really taken off, having been on air for two and a half years and filed over 550 reports. So you may be looking at this and asking, what's the difference between when the government fights misinformation and when these private companies do the same thing? Well, the worry is that when the government gets involved, it decides the truth that can be used to benefit itself. Well, private industries, <laughs> they'll never do something like that. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, I have a line account now, and my ID is Person of Interest 101, and my QR code is right here. So feel free to reach out if you have any suggestions for future episodes. Make sure you remember to subscribe by clicking here, and check out some of my previous episodes of Thai Thursday by clicking right here. Oh, and this is pretty cool. You can click right here and YouTube will use its top secret brilliant algorithm to suggest the next video of mine that they think you'd like most.